work alongside Joe Rodon, and that's provided the defensive platform for Leeds' nine-game winning run. You can see how favourably they compare to other top four defensive duos. They can keep attackers out, they can play out from the back as well. So will their defensive dominance continue? I'm sure they're going to face more of an aerial threat than usual today. So Daniel Farker facing Andre Brighton Reiter. They know each other really well. They faced off in Germany last season. Daniel Farker's Borussia Mönchengladbach coming out on top twice against Hoffenheim. And they bumped into each other on holiday. But this today is business. Yeah, Leeds are absolutely flying. They've got a guard against complacency, but for, for Brighton Reiter, they need the complete performance. Contain Leeds, but remember to attack and be clinical when they do. Vibrant and feisty in here, not far from Leeds Road in Huddersfield. Time was when Huddersfield Town were the team in West Yorkshire, the team in England, winning titles across the road on Leeds Road. Right now for Huddersfield Town, this is a fight to survive in the championship. A fight to stay in this league. Leeds United looking for a way out of it. They are in a title race, but most importantly, they are just about ahead of Ipswich Town right now. That could all change this weekend. Two and a half thousand Leeds United fans inside this place today. Some of whom may have come from Huddersfield because uh, when it comes to the town of Huddersfield, there are Leeds United fans here. Likes of uh, Jewsbury and Murfield, they are split. Only adds to the uh, atmosphere and the occasion here today. Sorba Thomas getting involved. Radoni. There's Pearson. again but it will be a throw in for uh, Leeds United you know, this game is really a question of belief for Huddersfield but you know, recent results they've won three of their last five a new coach has come in giving them a lift they're well organized there's clarity in how he wants them to play they're up against you know, comfortably the best side at the moment in the championship you've got to believe you can beat them Brighton right it's uh, officially a second game in charge you went to the back three last week it's uh, a back four at this moment in time there's Archie Gray leads normally start games very very quickly they get on the front foot so for Huddersfield they've got to be brave trying to maybe step onto Leeds and just disrupt that that early rhythm Rodon. Now Archie Gray. Ampadu reunited with Rodon at the heart of the Leeds United defence today. That's Furpo hunted down by Sorba Thomas. against Chelsea in the FA Cup on Wednesday night and here he is again looking to threaten Huddersfield Town it's Nonto who looks to pick up the pieces Kamara shifts the ball and a big save from Nichols to deny Somerville the first big chance of the afternoon yeah, pass and move football at his very best there Bergsorg you've got to stay with Archie Gray when he breaks forward from right back he doesn't the opportunity opens up, but I'm not sure why Kamara is taking a touch. Should be shooting first time. That was the, the best opportunity. And his last club goal was for Rangers just over a year ago. Glenn Kamara. He had a big chance there. Great move, though, from Leeds to open up Huddersfield.
And there's Junior Firpo. Was due for arrest in the uh, FA Cup tie during the week, but Jamie Shackleton fell ill, which uh, put pay to those plans for Firpo to be given a rest. And as usual, we've seen Gruyev just drop a little bit deeper in between the two centre halves, just dictating the, the tempo of the, the Leeds possession. That means the fullbacks can step up the pitch. Firpo and Gray can become wide attackers. Chance for Sorba Thomas to run. Rodoni is to his left. Here is Rodoni. You might fancy it. Flips it through to Ward. Stanley Ward. Melier Gavis. The way the Huddersfield are setting up in midfield with Hogg and Kasubu. Gives them that, that steal, that stability in the middle of the park. That releases Rodoni to get forward and get as close to Danny Ward as he can. Yeah, we did wonder about the setup of that Huddersfield Town midfield, the makeup of it. Off the ball, they are 4 4 2 here right now, out of possession. We won't admit, Andy, to how many we got wrong. <laughs> In the meantime, here's Bergzorg. Well, that's better from Bergzorg. He tracked Archie Gray all the way back into his own half. Has to continue to do that because Gray will pile forward and Leeds have comfortable possession. As Brody Spencer has been excellent since he was recalled by Huddersfield from Motherwell in the January window. And Leander on the right or the left or at the heart of the defence. Brilliant pass and move football from Leeds. You can see Archie Gray gets on his bike. Bergzorg is caught watching the ball. That's why Gray gets away. Great opportunity for Kamara. I'm not sure why he doesn't take the opportunity on first time. Breaks kindly for Somerville. He really scuffs his shot. He works really hard, Lee Nichols, to get back across his goal. And that first chance is passed up. He moves to his right so quickly that enables him to make the save. This is Gruev. What a major doubt for this game today, but he's to get himself fit. He's become a, an important player for Leeds United since his inclusion in the starting 11, which allowed Ethan Ampadu to move to centre back in the absence of Pascal Strauch. Nonto not getting what he was looking for. This is Leeds, formerly of Leeds. Now Bergzorg. Interesting. Sorba Thomas. Thomas driving at the heart of Leeds. Bamford. This is Nonto. Yeah, but we've got to be careful. In possession, they're going to commit bodies forward, step into the Leeds half, but Leeds, as we know, that ability to break forward so quickly when they wall back uh, when, the, when the ball back they're so quick in transition this can cause you so many problems break you down with patient football as we saw with the opportunities for Kamara and Somerville or they can break on the counter attack so it's very difficult to work out exactly how they're going to hurt you and you have to be set up really for both eventualities there's a huge channel there through the middle which uh, Melier looked to try and exploit with the pass to Ruter who have just about got away from Rodoni, Andre Brighton right and wants his Huddersfield Town to team to play on the front foot, to be aggressive, to counter press. Ruter on the end of that challenge. It's Kasumu who, who goes diving in. He's saying he, he got a touch on the ball, he won the ball. I wasn't sure that he did. Ah, he's nowhere near it. He goes through Ruter to get to the ball. It's, it's a clear foul. Getting used to taking the hits, Jorginho Ruta. Who does look more comfortable operating as a, a number 10. That is the position he, he tended to move towards even when he was playing as the central striker. There's that space in behind Jonathan Hogg, David Kasumu in front of the Huddersfield back four. That's where Ruta wants to get on the ball. This is Gruev. Now Archie Gray.
Beppo. Expected Leeds to make it strong starts this game, considering they're the winning one that they're on and they're dominating the ball. Would have been nice stepping onto them, but as we saw that opportunity, the two opportunities earlier on, it's not just having the ball, it's where Leeds have the ball, they get it into opponents' halves and play from there. This team have found their rhythm. Unstoppable right now in a championship. They've won their last nine championship games since the turn of the year. An incredible run, not just the results, but the performances too. Yeah, the championship is relentless, so to win nine consecutive games is quite extraordinary. We'll talk about fatigue, but you're a lot less tired when you're winning than when you're losing. There goes Crescencio Somerville in behind Huddersfield for a second. They've managed to regroup and emerge with the ball, and then Somerville commits the foul. That's good work from Matty Pearson, actually, because he doubles up on Somerville with Brody Spencer. Somerville is a nightmare to deal with. The fullback isolated against him, but as the, as the attack really unfolds, you see how close Matty Pearson is. So it's two Huddersfield defenders against Somerville, and he's crowded out. Well, Huddersfield believe that uh, they have appointed a manager with uh, one of the best CVs of a boss they've ever had in Switzerland. He won the title with Zurich, their first title in 13 years. In Germany, he's hugely admired. He took Paderborn to the top tier for the first time in their history. He also took Schalke, who are in a mess right now, into the top five. There's Rodoni! And Melier has to do a little bit of work. Well, it's a brilliant attack from Huddersfield, sharp, incisive, good understanding between the players. You understand why Rodoni takes the shot on, he's got the option of the pass you know, to his left to, to Danny Ward, but take the shot on. Melier reads it, it's a lovely clean strike, it's a save the keeper should make, it's moving away from him because the way that Rodoni strikes it, much better than Huddersfield on the ball. Now the threat of the deliveries from Sorba Thomas for Leeds United to try and deal with, plenty of Huddersfield players gathered in the far side of the box. They all move now, it's flipped forwards by Rodoni. And he's kept down, I think Melier got something on that, and he had to. It's brilliant awareness and reaction from Ilya Melier. Is that look for all the world is going to be turned in at the near post? Keeper moving to his near post, made it a really sharp save. Thomas again delivering, Melier deals with that. Leads under pressure. Ampadu, looking to be held down by Furpo. Draw whips up around this place. There's Bamford, he's lost it. Look at Huddersfield again. This place can shake when it gets going, and that's what's happening right now. Sorba Thomas again. To dig out the cross, but it gets away from Rodoni that time. Yeah, from the corner, it's a pacey ball in as usual from Sorba Thomas, just helped on its way by Rodoni, just steps in front of Patrick Bamford at the near post. So the goalkeeper Melly has to be on his toes, has to be on the move. You can see he's moving towards that near post. There's no one protecting the post, so the keeper has to get there. It's just his anticipation that there might be a problem, is why he makes the save. It's Melier 2, Rodoni 0 right now. The Huddersfield fans felt there was a foul there on Kasumo. His leads played out from the back, and Huddersfield put the squeeze on. And as I mentioned earlier on, that's the kind of football that Andre Brighton Writer wants to see, wants to implement here. There's many teams in the Championship that will just sit on the halfway line and just watch Leeds comfortably build up. Not Brighton Writer's Huddersfield. Archie Gray, Bamford, Somerville. The move by Nonto, the flag goes up. Good save in any case by Nichols to keep out Bamford. Yeah, Nonto just seemingly went a little bit too early, I think. 
it's not maybe so much of an ambitious pass you know, from Somerville. It's got Archie Gray, he's run away from Sorba Thomas. That's the easier pass, maybe the right pass. You can see that Nonto's gone to Illy, he is offside. The better ball would have been out to Archie Gray so he can whip across it. The last few minutes will encourage the home team who start the day two points above the relegation zone. Yeah, it's clearly not going to be one way traffic. Huddersfield are going to make a real game of it. There goes Bergsall. He'll settle for the corner. Sober Thomas with his right foot delivering from that right hand side. It's going to be an outswinger. Just how big an arc he puts on the ball would be interesting. He's got to give his teammates something to attack. Pearson waits, Lees is in there. The referee just uh, wants a word with someone. Andrew Kitchen, the referee today. So Nakayama and Willie Nonto, the two who are being spoken to. amongst those waiting to pounce here for Huddersfield. Everybody back for Leeds. Whipped in by Thomas. Off Bamford's head. Crashing goalwards and seen off and sent behind as Ward set his sights. Huddersfield are such a dangerous side from set plays with Silver Thomas's delivery. So it's zonal marking, purely zonal marking that Leeds are going for. That enables the, the Huddersfield aerial threat to be on the move when and Thomas delivers that ball into the box, whether it be an outswinger or an inswinger. Well, he does some steps, doesn't he, Silver Thomas? From one side of the pitch to the other now to take the corner from this side. <laughs> Thomas towards that near post, away by Ruta to Sumu. Leeds looking for something on the counter attack here. This is something they're really good at. The centre of Somerville carrying the ball forward for Huddersfield. But now, I've dealt with it. Leeds are good at most things this season. And pushing teams back on the counter-attack is one of the skills that this team has. What a challenge that was. What an important challenge that was from Brodie Spencer. If he gets bypassed, Leeds are away. is lively. Somerville goes down and wins the free kick. There's Furpo. Into Ruta. He's got Kasumu for company. Evades the challenge of Kasumu. Away from Spencer too. Well, Leeds made a really strong start dominating the ball, creating chances, but Huddersfield have definitely got a foothold in the game now, forcing Leeds back. struggling to win games under Darren Moore. They were drawing too many games. He felt they were hit by too many injuries. He lost his job in the end. John Worthington stepped up from the academy and uh, took caretaker charge. And has helped Huddersfield Town's change in fortunes. They've won three of the last five games. And John Worthington was playing this way because in the academy they still play the same style that they did as a team under David Wagner. Can't underestimate the, the job, holding job really that uh, John did, just picking up results, just a bit of belief back in the side. Then the new coach comes in, he steps back to where he came from. So he did a really valuable job. It wasn't for long, it was important to stabilise things after a managerial change. Bamford and now Somerville. As he calls, the referee has played the advantage. There goes Archie Gray. 
Lampard was in the middle. Somerville's still down, as is Nakayama, who made the challenge on Somerville. Both are still down as Silver Thomas kicks up the baton. There's Junior Furpa. And the referee now brings play to a halt. And there's a real crowd scene when Somerville picked the ball up, just ran into traffic and the wheel coming together. Let's hope he's okay. Nakayama's okay as well. And we saw a flash of a yellow card there. Looks like towards Jonathan Hogg. Yeah, Somerville's actually switched from left to right. Hogg just simply takes him out and then he goes flying into Nakayama. It's a, a naughty challenge really from Hogg. Understandably gets the yellow card for that. Yeah, that's why. And, uh, and then Nakayama was floored by Somerville. It's going to be a major challenge for both sets of fullbacks today because already we've seen Sober Thomas, Delano Bergs all change flanks. Somerville and Nonto have done the same as well. So as a fullback, you have to be aware of who you're up against. It's going to change during the course of the game, and the challenge you know, defensively is going to change when a different player comes across. Daniel Farker looking for his third promotion out of this league, a third title. Not bad for someone who didn't have any intention at all of becoming a manager. He felt working as a head coach or a manager was too short term, so he wanted to become a sporting director and studied economics whilst playing his football in Germany. Took over as sporting director of Lipstadt. They then needed a manager. So he did for the final 10 games of their season and he quite enjoyed it. And then the local sponsors said, we'll only sponsor the club and continue to sponsor the club if he remains as the manager. So that's how it all started for Daniel Farker. You know, the job that he's done at Leeds this season, extraordinary. You can remember they've just been newly relegated. There was a, a lot of players leaving, Premier League players, and left the club after that relegation. So even just sorting out the squad, knowing the players that he had available to him was a real difficulty, but once that was settled and he's been able to put his stamp on the team, they've never really looked back. I just wonder whether that sporting director background, albeit he could never have foreseen the chaos at Leeds in the summer, helped him out at the time. Very calm presence is Daniel Farker. When you're going through hell, Gary, keep on going. <laughs> and he likes to celebrate promotions with a bit of strawberry cheesecake, so he may have uh, one ready. He's a man after my own heart. There you go, that filled two minutes, we're ready to go again. And Crescencio Somerville. Moving as freely as he uh, normally does, but uh, they'll be giving him every chance, and likewise Nakayama with Huddersfield. Yeah, Somerville really couldn't prepare himself, he didn't see the challenge from Hogg coming at all, it was behind him, and then he can't get out of the way, he just runs into Nakayama once his legs have been taken away, so it's good to see him up and on his feet, and hopefully he can carry on, he's been sensational for Leeds this season. It's rode on both teams down to 10 for now. Gruev well, the idea is right. He's put a lot of football into the feet of Ruter. So Gruev just looking to turn Huddersfield around, put that ball over the top of Bamford. Just a, a miscommunication, and the pass was over hit as well. Nakayama and Crescencio Somerville are back on the pitch. Nichols drives that ball straight to Ruter. Yeah, he's trying to drill that ball over Ruter clearly out towards Bergsall down the left hand side and just under hits it. Kamara and again it's uh, Yuta Nakayama who's down just below us here so he is struggling right now and it could be the end of his afternoon the physios haven't even got around the other side of the pitch and they've had to come back on from this near side and this could be trouble for Yuta Nakayama yeah, once Jonathan Hogg made that challenge on Crescencio Somerville, it looked as if Somerville was going to be the one that might need to go off, but it's the way that he collided with Nakayama. I said that Somerville couldn't prepare himself for that collision, neither could Nakayama, didn't see it coming. The player comes flying into him and he's struggling. 
Well, Mikhail Helic has just returned from injury. A player that can do a job at both ends of the pitch. He's got eight goals this season, Mikhail Helic. Dangerous from set pieces. But uh, he is being readied by Andre Brighton writer to potentially replace Yuta Nakayama. Huddersfield dugout uh, just waiting for confirmation here from the medical staff. Well, both keepers have started the game sharply. Ilya Melier certainly been tested, shot from distance, uh, moving right to left. Gets across and makes a, an important stop there. This is less glamorous, but equally as important, moving his feet to get to the ball to make the save. There's the change then, Nakayama withdrawn. Along comes Mikhail Helic. His third successive campaign fighting against the drop. Mikhail Helic. He's becoming a, a bit of a veteran of this. Well, good to see him back fit, but unfortunate to see Yuta Nakayama leave the pitch in these circumstances. Well, let's hope it's just an impact injury, not a, a twist, and he's able to come back quickly. So the return of Mikhail Helic. Nakayama was operating left back. So it looks like uh, Brody Spencer has come across to this left back position now and Pearson to right back and Helic and leaves the two centre backs. And that's going to be an interesting battle if Somerville can get up against Matty Pearson on the edge of that Huddersfield penalty area. It's not going to be easy for, for Pearson, it's clearly more of a centre half than a, a full back. Yeah, no stranger though to playing in that right back role, Matty Pearson. Likewise, Spencer at left back. Players have to be versatile these days. You have no chance on it. That's where it went, went wrong for so many years. Not just there, my friend. Once again in the battle, and Leeds get the throw. There's Lees. Now Ward. That's Ampadu asking Pamford to go and run. Faced by Helic. There's Kamara, who's hunted down by Rodoni. That's good defensive recovery there from Huddersfield. It seems to have a bit of a problem when Bamford made that forward run, but he got back quickly in numbers and forced Leeds back into their own half. Rodon. There's Ruter to Gray. Ruter again. Spencer for company this time. It was helped out by Bergzorg. Rodon. Somerville. Straight to Rodoni. 
it's too much on that for Birdsall. The attention applauded by the home fans. Yeah, the Huddersfield defensive setup was good. The mistake from Somerville, poor layoff. Able to break forward quickly with Rodoni, but they've got to get that first pass right. Find a teammate very quickly. You can get on the front foot and maybe take advantage of Leeds being short of defensive numbers. Huddersfield Town, 19th in the championship, the highest position since October. Still very much looking over their shoulders. There's Ruter. play to a halt with Kasumu down. Yeah, Jonathan Hogg has got to be careful, he's been boxing and flying into another challenge there. So the referee's just said to him, just be careful because overstep the mark again, you could be off. Andrew Kitchen, his first season refereeing in the championship. Switch. That's how tight it is right now. That Fab Four. Plenty more big games coming your way in the championship on Tuesday. Portman Road, Ipswich Town against Bristol City. 7:30 Sky Sports Football. You can also see Sheffield Wednesday against Plymouth. 7:40 on Sky Sports Action. Then on Wednesday, West Bromwich Albion go to West London. Queen's Park Rangers who are fighting the drop. See that from 7.30 on Sky Sports Football. Plenty coming your way as the run-in approaches. Looks like David Kasumu is OK to continue. Junior Furpo. Now Somerville. This is Nonto. Was seen off by Radoni. Nonto knows Andre Brighton writer really well. They were together at Zurich when they won the title. He actually substituted Willie Nonto once, and Willie Nonto left the pitch in tears. The reason he substituted him was because he was uh, on a yellow and risking a red. Kasimu is back on the pitch, Huddersfield back up to their full complement. Andrew Brighton Wrighter was also in charge of Hoffenheim when they sold Jorginho Ruter to Leeds. So there are a few connections, there's Nonto. Bamford in the middle, likewise Tom Lees. Well, Nonto's first touch is outstanding, the ball is drilled into him, he manages to get the ball out in front of him, away from Huddersfield defenders. Is, is clearly against him, so he can't really shoot. So he's clearly looking for Bamford with the pull, but with a bouncing ball, difficult to, to find its target. But he's drifting in off that right-hand side, Nonto, with Archie Gray providing the width, he can become more of a, a central attacker. The Leeds have pulled two Huddersfield defenders out of the box, but it uh, didn't matter in the end because Pearson got to it. Some of it. There's Archie Gray, hunted down by Kasumu. Nonto hits the deck. Some of it. Nonto stays down, and the referee has brought play to a halt. Yeah, it's a physical mismatch, isn't it? Nonto up against Pearson. The bouncing ball tempts Pearson in, who seems to get more of Nonto than the ball. See one is going for it, Pearson, but he's never going to get there. It's going to be Nonto first. And I think the fact that Nonto goes to ground the way that he does maybe makes the referee's mind up. Yeah, Matty Pearson was not about to take a step backwards from that.
Watching on as uh, Willie Nonto continues to receive treatment here. Willie Nonto, who's been keeping Dan James out of the team of late. Yeah, Willie Nonto has really made the most of his opportunity. Dan James was really excelling down the right hand side. Picked up an injury. Nonto stepped in, did well, scored goals, and doesn't really look bad. The last thing he'll want, of course, is an injury to miss a few games. Let James, you know, back in again. He might not get his place back. I'm not saying he's uh, he's scared of the rain, Dan James, but he was just wondering, wasn't he? <laughs> Should I go out and warm up? Or just you can't just warm up with an here. umbrella, Dan. You really can't. <laughs> The rain continues to tumble in West Yorkshire. So Leeds now down to 10. So they try and deal with this, uh, what looks like a, a rib injury to Willie Nonto. Somerville with his eyes on this. Move goalwards by Furpo. Plenty backed over Huddersfield. Away by Hogg. And that is trouble potentially for Leeds. Mistake by Kamara. There's Sorba Thomas. Kasimu's up there with it. It's Sorba Thomas who didn't make the most of it. And a really good opportunity gone. However, here they come again. It was Gray who dealt with it for Leeds. Bergzor. Heavy touch from him. And Huddersfield will get the corner. Yeah, the mistake is Kamara's, but the recovery from Archie Gray is outstanding. This is a collector's item. The break is on. Archie Gray, I think he does really well, because what he does, he cuts off actually the pass to Kasumu, and then when he realises he's sort of time, he's going to take him on, he closes in and picks the ball off. There's a midfielder playing as a, as a defender, and that's an outstanding piece of defensive understanding from Archie Gray. Just another day at the office. Archie Gray. There's never any panic on and off the ball, it just makes the game look so easy. 17 years old, ridiculous. But 18 soon, Andy. Referee stepping into a couple of battles there. As Silver Thomas prepares to take this corner kick for Huddersfield. We were in such a good position there on the counter attack. and Nonto getting to know each other well. The battle continues between the two. Fired in by Sorba Thomas. Melier in command. Thomas again. Kasumu, he was hunted down. And he committed the foul. And the other card for the Huddersfield midfield. Well, positive goalkeeping initially, but then brave defending, not once but twice from Rodon. That header, and then when the ball breaks to Kasumu, look at Rodon launching himself, getting in the line of fire, getting fouled. His team are under pressure, brilliant piece of defending, not once but twice. Confirmation of the yellow card for David Kasumu. And not for the first time, Joe Rodon standing his ground in a Leeds United shirt. He's been such a, a key signing. Made by Daniel Farker. Yeah, Kasumu's not looking to injure Rodon, he only got eyes on the ball, he's looking to get a, a shot in, it's just that Rodon gets there so quickly. Kamara. He was a relieved man having made the error which led to that Huddersfield counter-attack. There's Nonto. Brace cross. Whether it be Bergzorg or Spencer, they've got to do more to stop the cross. Too easy there for Archie Gray to deliver. Thankfully for Huddersfield, it wasn't a great ball in. Somerville, caught. Another card is out here, this time to Pearson. Yeah, does Matty Pearson really need to make this challenge, risk getting booked? You know, that is, a, that is a really poor challenge. It goes right down the, the calf of Somerville. Nowhere near the ball, takes the man out. It's a really poor challenge, absolutely a yellow. A feisty West Yorkshire derby. Somerville hops back to his feet. 
I think the Huddersfield players, yes, you want to be combative, aggressive. You've got to keep your heads, though. The, the home crowd are winding them up as well. They've just got to you know, just, just calm down, show a bit of composure. You're going flying into challenges time and time again. Eventually, it's going to prove costly. There's Archie Gray. Now Rodon. Ampadu. There's Somerville. Gruev. Furpo. Here for Bamford, trying to smuggle it through to Jorginho Ruta. He just tries to overdo it, Patrick Bamford, just shoot from there. Well, he caught Rodoni there, and then Nonto was uh, paying close attention to Rodoni too, who wasn't too happy with the presence of Willie Nonto. I talked about the Huddersfield players keeping their composure, the referee has to as well. You see the crowd reaction to that poor challenge, that foul by a Leeds player. You know, Bamford does take him out, it is a foul, it's a free kick. I don't think it's anything more serious than that, is it? Maybe that raised arm is why the Huddersfield players and fans aren't happy, but you know, for the referee, Andrew Kitchen, he's got to keep a lid on things as well, keep his composure. He doesn't look particularly flustered, does he? No, I was, I was about to say that. The picture of composure there. Unlike the man alongside me. <laughs> Someone else here, is there? That's Junior Firpo. Almost between these two, you'd imagine it. Andre Brighton right at. would be uh, pretty pleased with what he's seen from his Huddersfield Town team so far. Against what has become in the championship, an unstoppable machine. Yeah, to a large degree, they have contained one of the most dangerous attacking teams in the championship. And and the opportunity has been there to get forward, they have. Rodon. Kalik looking to get there ahead of Ruter. Ampadu. Bamford gives chase. Spencer with the matter in hand. talked about, about Huddersfield containing Leeds. Yes, Leeds have had you know, the bulk of the possession, but with that 80% possession, they haven't really done an awful lot with it, just one shot on target. So for Huddersfield, it's not about having the more the ball than Leeds, it's making sure that when Leeds have it, you, you're nice and solid, defensively organised, and you limit the touches they get in your penalty area. Leeds in the way that time to halt the progress of Willie Nonto. a contest with an added edge 16 miles between the town of Huddersfield and the city of Leeds that's Kasumu yeah, Huddersfield well organised aggressive for Leeds it's probably going to be a study in perseverance and patience we saw what happened against Leicester City stay in the game Opportunity comes along to show a bit of quality and leads have so much attacking quality they can easily open you up. You've just got to be patient. Make those quality forward passes. The fans unhappy again as the referee tells Huddersfield Town to retake the throw. Feisty and snarling inside here. I've got to say, last week I had the uh, the pleasure to be at Allen Road as you were, Andy, as well. That atmosphere last week, Leeds against Leicester, one of the best I've ever been in. Incredible noise. It was electric from start to finish. Two and a half thousand Leeds fans here today. 
Rinsing off against the Huddersfield Town counterparts. Another foul on Rodoni. Again, it was non so Rodoni gestures towards the fans as if to say, increase the volume even more. Yeah, Nonso's just the wrong side of, of Rodoni when that ball breaks and he just you know, runs into the back of him. Rodoni's clever, he just protects the ball, he sees Nonso coming, makes sure he gets caught. An opportunity for the big lads to come up from the back and saw but Thomas to deliver. Sensible from uh, and Jack Rodoni there. He's been all over the front lines, worked so hard on and off the ball for the team. So we're heading towards additional time at the end of the first half. Sorba Thomas is standing over this set piece for Huddersfield. <laughs> Thomas with that ball in the head and kept out somehow by Yannier. But he couldn't get there to keep out the follow-up. And look who is there again, Mikael Hillek. The defender with the instinct of a goal scorer. some giant players but how about the quality of the ball in from Sorba Thomas that's why I highlighted him and the big Huddersfield players before kickoff this is perfect in swinging Casey beats the first man keeper can't come and deal with it that's why Melier's pinned on his line so they get that first contact Huddersfield Melier does well to keep it out but the reaction of Ellen is what it's all about waiting for the ball to break there when it does it's miraculous the way that uh, Melier keeps that ball out. But he's on his toes, the big sense of the substitute, and tucks it over. The ball in from Sorba Thomas is outstanding once again, right on the money. And have we got a shocking score. Ninth goal for him as we head into nine additional minutes at the end of the first half here. working absolutely perfectly containing leads we knew probably 70 80 percent of the game is going to be that but when you go forward are you going to commit are you going to be clinical can you make the best use of set plays and they have there's nonto way beaten to it by the retreating bergsall what can leads do from a set piece now that's exactly what huddersfield need from the, the wide midfield to track the fullback all the way back in the first 10 minutes of the game, he let Archie Gray go. He's learned his lesson. Somerville is standing over this. Leeds looking for an instant response. Referee will see that as a foul and a free kick. As Pearson hit the deck. Yeah, it's Ruter who just leans into Matty Pearson, then nudges him off the ball. It's a goal, it's a delivery that is just out of this world. It's really his trademark. It's right into a spot where it's hard to defend. The keeper can't come and catch it or punch it clear. It's there to be attacked. It was. Melier does brilliantly, but Helic exactly where he needs to be to tuck it home. Substitute to hero right now, Mikhail Helic. Still plenty of time for Leeds United to turn this around. But they have been rocked. There's Kamara. Some of it. Well, it's a, a second yellow and a red for Jonathan Hogg. He'd had his warning. And Andrew Kitchen races across to show the red card. And suddenly the mood changes here. Well, it's a, a raised arm from Jonathan Hogg for such an experienced campaigner. I'm really surprised by this if it is because they've done so much hard work in the first half. They've got the lead. The last thing you want to do is get a player sent off unnecessarily. 
And you can see he just leans into Rutero with that left arm. He knows what he's doing for me. That's not accidental. You know, he sees Rutero, raises the arm, has a little look at him. And sorry, it's into Firpo, but into his face. You simply can't do that. He's on a yellow as well. It's madness. The Huddersfield captain dismissed just after they'd hit the front, just before half-time in this West Yorkshire derby. Another twist. I'm sure that Jonathan Hogg might say that you know he's defending himself, he's raising that arm to protect himself, but for me he isn't. It is dangerous. He was raising that left arm up into the face of, of Firpo. So Junior Firpo waits to come back onto the pitch. And suddenly it went quiet in here. And Jack Redoni now has to drop back into a central mid midfield role. This is going to be really difficult for Huddersfield. Yes, they've got the lead, but a man light against a dangerous side. Well, half a football to play as well. This has got incredibly difficult. And Jonathan Hogg, I'm just amazed he's, he's done what he's done. That's Nonto. Red card of Jonathan Hogg's career, and it could be costly for Huddersfield, who do have the advantage, but up against this Leeds United team, who've been in full flow since the turn of the year. Leeds will fancy the chances now of turning this one around. I did say earlier in the half when Jonathan Hogg went clattering into to Somerville, picked up that yellow card, he went into Kamara soon after, and I said, you've got to be so, so careful, referees maybe had a word with him. He just cannot afford to, to run any risk. There was no need for him to do what he did, halfway line, there's no, there's no uh, problem there, there's no threat there. Again, just keep your arms down and okay, if you can't head the ball, if you can't win the ball, make sure you don't commit another yellow card offence. That's Firpo to Somerville. Ruter. Retreating Radoni gets to it, here's Kamara. Firpo again. Ruter. Protects the ball really well, but then puts too much on that for Archie Gray. Well, in this first half, Huddersfield have been really disciplined, defended well, but Leeds' is attacking quality, not good enough. A frustrated Daniel Farker on the Leeds United bench. Also, Daniel Farker has plenty of attacking options on the bench, so possibly make change at half-time if he feels that's the, the best route back into the game. I do believe the sun is popping out. We've, have, we've had everything here today, the fog, the rain, a bit of snow on the hills as well, and now the sun. Plenty happening in the first half here. Bergsall, Thomas is in the middle. Zorg wins the free kick. Another free kick in a wide area for Huddersfield. Yeah, it's naive really from Gruyere. The last thing you want to do against Huddersfield, a big side with Silver Thomas delivery, is give free kicks away in any area that's close to the to the penalty area. So just stay on your feet. It's going nowhere, Bergzog there. Don't dive in. Get a free kick away. You pile pressure on your defence and a second goal for Huddersfield here. Even though know, they're a man light, this could make all the difference. Danny Ward and Mikael Helic having words with each other again. It was Ward's header which was kept out by Melier and Helic gobbled up the rebound. And he's waiting as well. In by Sorba Thomas. It's Radoni. Nonto is in the way. Bergsorg again. He just like to put himself around. Corner by Huddersfield. You have to admire the Huddersfield mindset. They've lost Jonathan Hogg, but they've not sat back and tried to just get to half time. They've stepped onto Leeds looking for a second. Sorba Thomas, creator in chief, is looking to create some more mischief for Leeds here. 
Deeper corner this time from Thomas, and Melier will gather. And a quick release finds Crescencio Somerville. Somerville beaten to the punch by the retreating Danny Ward, whose header it was, which was kept out by Melier. Challenge on Somerville. Huddersfield fans giving the referee a nudge that half time is imminent. Ruta, there's Somerville. Now Ruta, it's Ruta! I'm not sure it's the, the best choice actually for Somerville to come back in field. They play Furpo in. He's in acres of space. It's a more difficult chance for Ruta under pressure from three or four Huddersfield defenders. It's been feisty, at times chaotic, and Huddersfield Town have the edge against Leeds United at the break here. Mikhail Helic, of course, the defender with the goal scorer's instinct with the goal. But not long after, Huddersfield reduced to 10 men after Jonathan Hogg was sent off. Half time, Huddersfield 1, Leeds United 0.